Alright! Second again. time's a charm. Second time's a charm. <laughs> That's right. I think my belly might be a little bigger than last time. Mine's a little smaller. I think you got yeah. my little weight on that. <laughs> Transferred. <laughs> Quick weight transfer. <laughs> so, this is the Duff Law channel. Duff Law. On YouTube. And something I started doing is putting the link to uh, sell the pictures that a friend of mine Richard Gilligan is taking he's an excellent photographer so I like to say I'm selling art <laughs> that is artsome yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that will be in the description and I don't know if anyone saw the last video me and Damien did I was the host and Damien was the guest yeah and We're I think this time try something a little different flip flip flop so Damien you'll be the host this time. listen here He's been interviewing everybody. Trying but we still to. don't know, you know, <laughs> a lot about the Duff Law. So he came up with the idea, like, hey, why don't we do switch it up? Switch up the roles. So, uh, Mr. Duff Law, what brought us here today? How, how did you here. get into podcasting? Into podcasting. Well, um, that brings me back to Tank Top Friday, which Tank is Top Friday. Clint Stroman. Um, he runs that. He, I think he started that last year, which is a podcast that's available on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon. And nice. he brought up the idea that I could jump on his show, which we still haven't done that. We haven't done it yet. He's had a few family emergencies pop up and whatnot. But Plus, you just got good internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was, it was like perfect timing as soon as... As soon as he hit me up about that, I was like, yeah, it's perfect timing. And just got the connected to the Starlinks, and I'm ready to rock and roll whenever he is. But That is awesome. He's still working on uh, so setting up a time. Who is Duff Law? That's the question. The, That's the, a, the origin. The origins. How do we get to, to this point? The origins of Duff. Uh, well, I think we have to go way back. Yes, we do. Way, way back. Uh, back in the time. My father's name is Duff. Uh, my my brother's my older brother's name is Gordon. Uh, but my granddad is Gordon. Uh, Gordon Duff Law, and my great granddad is Duff Christie Law. But the name Duff goes all the way back to the Duffs of scotland it's a scottish name and so are you part scottish yeah welcome yeah. to the team <laughs> i'm part I, scottish too <laughs> and that brings me to the point about duff town a town in scotland <laughs> that i really want to go see because you know it's, it's my town of course so i gotta go see it at some point in my life but Duff um, town. yeah, I got to go back there and reclaim my territory. This is my town. <laughs> you know that would make a, a, a great T-shirt for this podcast. Duff town. Duff town. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. It is the the law. <laughs> that'd be perfect. <laughs> Copyright Love pending. It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> don't take that. <laughs> that is uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we all know we're all veterans. I'm prior army or prior marine. What made you want to go to those marines? I say it like <laughs> that for a reason. To those marines. <laughs> those marines. Well, uh, I was 17 when I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life. You know, senior year of high school. Being like, man, I definitely don't want to start off with a whole bunch of debt with going to college and stuff. Because my parents definitely did not have the wealth to be able to afford a college education. So I played football uh, in high school. But 
That was mainly just for something to get out of the house. <laughs> what position did you play in football? Um, in high school, I played linebacker, uh, strong safety, and running back. And once in a while, uh, D-line. But my senior year was just strong safety and a little bit of running back. Now you were a big free safety. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in high school. <laughs> I was not. Ne- ne- neither was school. I. No, in high school I was little. I think my senior year I might have been like 170. Like, and so out, out of the choices of all the branches, why Marines? Yeah, well, that goes back to a conversation that I had with my father, um, which he wasn't in the military um, but I was, I did go see all the recruiters. I was in my last, my final decision got boiled down to Air Force, Army, and Marines. I had pretty much ruled out the Coast Guard and the Navy, uh, just because wasn't interested in going on boats. But boiled down to the Marines, I actually did an interview, a video interview that I turned into a school project with a Marine that had just recently gotten out. Um, And going off of that conversation, that really made me more interested in actually getting into it. And, um, you know, the world's finest fighting force, the uniforms. and The uh, uniforms are nice. I'm I'm sorry. (laughs) Everybody in the Army knows the Marines have the best uniforms. Spiffy. 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 Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think the last thing was – the final choice was something my, my dad said to me. He was like, well, if you don't join the Marine Corps, will you? do you think you'll regret not joining? And I was like, well, probably. But I don't, I don't know why. But that's, that's what uh, made my mind up. And I was like, you know what? Just do the Marines. You know, they're always talking about how they're the best, best of the best. And... I think I'd regret it if I didn't try to be one of the best of the best. And what what job did you pick going in? I picked infantry. Infantry. 03. And as a... As a grunt. Yeah. Ground pounder. In the School of Infantry, which is uh, right after boot camp. Like, you got three months of boot camp, and then you get a li- I got a little leave because it was right around this time, right around Thanksgiving time when I finished... Uh, boot camp and school of infantry was immediately after that and i was that's where you kind of pick what job you want to do in the infantry there's assault men there's machine gunner there's mortarman lav crewman or you can just stick with 0311 which is just you know ground pounder rifleman i was gonna do the lav crewman um, for the first probably month of that, I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to do the LAVs. And, and what does that entail? Uh, the LAV crewman? Yeah. Um, you know the amphibious vehicles? Um, the ones that... Water to land? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amphibious landings. They'll, they'll do that. They'll do the, the land convoys as well. Nice. Um, but pretty much you're like part of a mobile amphibious unit that would pretty much can get anywhere because you can you're, you're sh- on a ship is where the lav is primarily and then they literally drive off the ship into the ocean and then to the land from there and then that's their pr- primary focus but i didn't do that i i let uh, my buddies convince me to be a mortarman <laughs> I let the whole. It's always the friends. Yeah, it was like, hey, well, we're gonna be mortarman. We're gonna do the mortarman thing, and I was like, well, I'm gonna do LAVs for the first like month. It was like, well, I'm gonna do that, so y'all have fun. But then eventually, I was like, well, the homies are pretty cool. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be a mortarman too. So I ended up doing the mortarman thing, and we trained with. 60 millimeter mortars, 81 millimeter mortars, and I never got the chance to shoot 120s. I only did 81s and 60s. A lot of 80. I ended up going into 1st Battalion, 8th Marines, 
um, right after School of Infantry, based at Camp Lejeune, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, where we did a hell of a lot of uh, 81s training. It was pretty sweet. And I ended up, I ended up really liking being a being a mortarman and part of a weapons company, 81s platoon, and 1st Battalion, 8th Marines. I don't yeah, know and how many years were you in the Marines? I was in the Marines for almost four years, three years and ten months. I got out early. Nice. I think if I could have signed a two-year contract, I would have done that. But none of the branches at my time of enlistment were offering that. The Army said they just did away with that. I think I probably would have went Army if they did offer a two-year contract. Now, you don't seem like the the typical Marine guy. I or as the rest of us say, <laughs> you know, uh, don't come for us, uh, crown eaters. <laughs> Yeah, I actually uh, get that a lot. Um, it's I re- Leading up to when I was getting out, I started noticing my language being c- cuss words, like every, <laughs> almost every other word. I don't know. change that <laughs> quick, huh? Being in the infantry, too, you know, they're called grunts for a reason. I mean, you can literally grunt to one another and somehow know what we're talking about to each they other. They have their <laughs> own language. Yeah, um, but I was like, I'm really going to have to change my language and my demeanor um, going into the civilian sector. Yeah, because looking at your resume, you know, some of the things you've done is like, you are a Marine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This don't match. Because <laughs> didn't you do uh, some diving work? Yeah. Are yeah. you a certified diver? I did some commercial diving work. Um, so I have all my international commercial diving certifications. I have just, for terms of scuba, Yeah. I've only got my open water scuba certification. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I did work as a commercial diver in the Gulf of Mexico. I also did work as an insurance adjuster for catastrophic insurance You left insurance that off your claims. resume. Yeah. <laughs> that's, one, that's one I just do, typically don't mention unless like, there's – Marine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a diver. Yes. Whoa. Insurance adjuster. Wait a minute. What? Yeah. <laughs> Where'd that one come from? Starting to sound like me now. Yeah. And um, I did go to Penn State for a little bit, too. Uh, use use my GI Bill. One of the biggest things, biggest bummers for me about being in the military and t- talking to my recruiter and how recruiters lie to you, um, I, was, I said, well, because one thing I mentioned to all the recruiters I talked to, I was like, I've got horrible eyes. I need to get eye surgery, LASIK or PRK or whatever. And every one of them said, yeah, you can definitely get that when you're in. But the unit I went to, we did two back-to-back deployments. Yep. And so I would get on the list, and then we'd go do our workup, and then they'd be like, I'd have to postpone it because I'd get deployed. And then I'd come back, get on the list again, and then we start our workup again, go back on another deployment. So they just kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And then I finally got the eye surgery probably within one year of my getting out. I was – Went to commercial dive school, then went to Louisiana, started working. About three months into that, I was like, all right, I got 3K, so I'm going to just buy this eye surgery finally. And finally bit the bullet and had the robots go in to fix my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that was freaky, eye surgery. And well, what did you study while you were in school? Um I went to Penn State for two, maybe three semesters. And my first semester was information science and technology. And I switched uh, after the first semester already to business. And then I think I, I actually I got a job offer, and that's why I left Penn State, job offer in Kuwait, doing static security there. And I did try to pick up online school again back in Florida with Penn State. But doing online school is uh, not for me. <laughs> it's not for me either. <clears throat> can't do it online. I can't do it. I need a classroom to go to. I need people to interact with. And the interaction online is just not It's not there. <laughs> it just doesn't feel like I'm doing anything. <laughs> so I'm curious. Like, how did you get into electronics? This, uh, 
goes to a, a big uh, turning point in my life. Uh, I got hit on the highway by an 18-wheeler. I was doing commercial diving work in Florida, and we were on our way back from Boca Raton. We were doing some work there, and a buddy, I was, I was a passenger in a friend's truck, and all of a sudden on the highway, we just stop, dead stop, and next thing you know, this semi rear ends us. He he was doing at least 55 when he hit us, because he the skid marks after the collision. Would, he went at least close to a football field, maybe maybe two. He was oh, he sliding. Must have been doing he way more than 55. Off, went hit the guardrail, but that really messed up my neck and my back, and I took a some time off after that to get evaluated and uh, scans and all that and I ended up the accident messed up three vertebrae in my neck and three vertebrae in my lower back and that started this spree of RFA ablation surgical procedures yes I know about those <laughs> yeah I heard you, you you know a little bit about what that procedure is like yeah but you did it with the VA yeah Family. Brave man. <laughs> well, I didn't do it with the VA in the beginning. I had it on the civilian side. Civilian doctors were doing it because I was still active duty. Yeah. And then I went to the VA one time. <laughs> one time only. Never went back again. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little sketchy getting those kinds of procedures. Right. Deal with that close to your spinal cord and stuff. And if y'all are wondering what that procedure all entails... You're basically getting stuck with needles very close to your spine to kill nerves with uh, basically burning the nerves, the simplest form. They go in and burn the nerves so you can't feel the pain. And they don't just stick you with one needle. It all depends how bad you are. Me, it was six needles, three on each side. <laughs> um, you probably had more because you had upper and lower. I just had yeah. lower. And I got it done multiple times. Yes, multiple times. Yeah. Because it doesn't last. The mm -hmm. nerves grow back. They grow back pretty quickly after the first one. Yeah. And then I got it done again, and that lasted a lot longer. And I only had it I only had it done twice on my neck and three times on my lower back. Ooh. But definitely worth it. Like I, what I describe it as is it yeah, it's felt like it. Jesus was touching my spine. <laughs> That's... I was like, man, this is amazing. <laughs> like, you're sore as hell the next day. Oh, yeah. But after that, you, you're able to stand up straight and move around. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, this is a blessing until the nerves start growing back. <laughs> yeah. Then you're like, oh, no. Because <laughs> it doesn't doesn't uh, make your injuries go away. No. It just makes you stop feeling them. <laughs> so did you do any schoolwork of going to electronics? Yeah. Yeah, I went to a place called Strack Institute. Oh, nice. Um, that was a five-month program where I got uh, ETA, Electronics Technicians Association, um, certifications through them. And pretty much everything from soldering to how to certify different types of electronic work like how to inspect uh, PCBs and, you know, all the terminologies and took all the tests, passed all the tests. Yeah, me and uh, me and DeAndre went to the same school. I was about to say, I was like, I think I've heard that name. I think he said it too. Y'all yeah. both came together mm -hmm. to this great place that we are. Jesus. <laughs> this lovely place does have one really good drink. Goombay. The Goombay. Man. See, he, he's drinking the Goombay light. There's another Goombay punch that's in a gold can, and it tastes like nectar. Yeah. They didn't have the gold ones today. No, oh, no. But, yeah, it does taste like the nectar from the well, gods. Have you tried the, the gold ones in the, uh, like, the plastic cans? Not plastic. Yeah. But the plastic bottles? Yeah. Don't taste the same. No, it doesn't. It it's does got to be in the can. Got to be in the can. Mm -hmm. I tried it from the plastic, and I was like, "This, there's something about it. Don't taste the same." Another former uh, military man. Since we're talking about cans, do you remember 
on you know your great deployments overseas mm-hmm. it was a beautiful can out there that you can only get that they i i researched it i looked it up they only sell it to the military and the military is the only ones that can get them rippets <laughs> the rippets see <laughs> they come in a can about this big these cans you can only get on deployment overseas. Mm-hmm. They only sell it to the military. I've contacted them myself. Rip it. The ones in a dollar store nowadays are like this big. They're not the same. Mm-mm. That little pack of punch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a deployment dog we adopted and named it Rip It. Rip It? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. The Rip It's were the best. Yeah, that dog was something. It would um, go on with us on every one of our foot patrols. It would just walk with us. It would come back up to the base with us. Um, cause it wouldn't just go with one squad on the patrols. When anyone went out on a patrol, the dog would go with everyone. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was a um, little protection dog. Yeah, that was our little rippet friend. Yeah. I miss those rippets so much. Yeah, they were they were something. They were powerful. They yeah, they <laughs> were too powerful. You got, Some people lived off those rippets. When you got eight hours to stand on posts overnight, that's, that's, that's you, can, you can easily go through a twelve pack of rippets. Oh yeah, <laughs> but and then still be, be able to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then you'd be up for the next week. Yeah. <laughs> then you'd be up for the next week. For sure. You you miss any of the military life? I do actually. Yeah. Um, mainly. A lot of times, like I've, I've, my tactic for changing my language was just slowing down a lot of what I'm saying. So I talk a lot slower just to try to articulate what's on my mind more. Um, in the, in the military, you know, it's, it was a lot of life and death training. So you're, you know, you're yelling one time real fast and everybody knows. What What's saying. going on? Yeah, that, that one command or something gets everybody instantly on the same page. And we might not even actually hear what they say, but we hear the inflection in their voice and know exactly what they mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole bunch of different acronyms that just shorten the whole uh, conversation or eliminate the need for a conversation even. Um, I don't remember a lot of them though. Like I think, um, I think I've purposely like blocked out a lot of that. Yes. Cause converting into the civilian it's sector, real. it's Boy. all useless. So it's in there, but it's like on the backup, backup drive, you know, like <laughs> that's corrupted. Even, <laughs> even doing what we're doing now, you know, working different contracts and going to different countries and stuff like that. And still, you know, working for the military they really don't use some of the no. terminology that we used to use this is not a, it's totally different it's a totally different military now completely different world working for shoot i even went back and worked for the army back in kuwait and they didn't know half the stuff no i was like what kind of place is this yeah i've been through Ku- here kuwait many a times weird. kuwait was weird yeah but do you enjoy working in electronics now? I do. Uh, one of the main reasons going back to why I got into electronics, the, the accident, back injuries, commercial diving is extremely physically demanding. And after that accident and having to go through all these procedures, I'm like, I'm going to need to do a career change because there's no way I'm going to be able to continue doing this with my spine in the shape that it's in. And... uh thought about electronics because almost all the time when you're assembling electronics or evaluating them the electronics need to be in an environment that is almost identical to what the most comfortable environment is for the human body to be in yes so i was like i'm gonna get into this field (laughs) i'm gonna go somewhere where there's ac (laughs) yeah ac i can sit down you know, I don't need to put stress unnecessary stresses on my spine. And uh, that's something that we talked about last time is education and how getting any sort of education is going to be beneficial. 
and especially when you can, you know, move, change up your whole career. That is the truth. Mm-hmm. And that was one of my big decision makers with going into the military in general was the benefits upon being finished with the military. Not the benefits of being in. Yeah. They're going to destroy your body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the benefits. They don't say, you know, us, you know, some people that get out of the military at 40 are actually like 60. That is the truth. Their bodies are done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Like, I walk around here, they say, you are the oldest, youngest man I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> I will say something about uh, Damien's demeanor, too. Um, I don't think I would have guessed you're the typical Army fella of nine years. Uh, most people that I've met that have been in for more than four typically have that mindset stuck and that vocabulary. It's, that vocabulary. it's stuck. It's ingrained. It ain't going anywhere. So they st- still s- communicate the same way. Um, See, I got lucky. <clears throat> I was on a lot of medication. I lost a lot of my memory. Yeah. I had to go to speech therapy. So it helped me change the way I speak. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Then I got my memory back and I was like, <laughs> this isn't how I used to talk. This ain't how I used to talk. <laughs> I like it, though. Everybody understands what I'm saying. I'm a different person. (laughs) Yep. Change up the character a little bit. Yep. And change is not always bad. Sometimes it's for the best. Definitely. You can always learn and educate from change. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Evolve. So you you think about doing anything else in the future? Yeah, I'm assessing my options. Um, I like doing the contracting because I don't need to... Uh, get too involved with politics back home. I like being out of the country because everything I hear about the country now is just stuff that blows my mind. I'm like, I exactly. can't believe. Uh, like the latest thing I heard is they're tr- uh, they're trying in Colorado. They are trying to eliminate Trump from the ballot. Yeah, I saw that too. And I was like, what? They're trying to control the elections before the elections, elections even come. Like they they work trying to control them with by controlling the votes, but that I guess since that didn't work with Trump, or maybe it did work with Biden, you know. Um, but yeah, seeing that, I'm like, it's killing. Well, looky here, we have a special <laughs> guest, ladies and gentlemen. Come on in. Come on in. <clears throat> it's the man, the myth, the legend. Hey, the barber. Hey. Shout out to Mr. Dre here for allowing us to be here today. Providing and the set. Providing the set. Yeah. It's the barber right here. He's the one that get us, gets us fresh. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You know, Keep probably after clean. this, I'm probably going to try to swindle him because, you know, <laughs> I got a hat on for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh probably perfect time for a smoke break. Yeah, smoke break time. Make sure our comms are good and. Maybe pick it back up again. And we are back in the flesh. In the flesh. Now, we're, we're towards the end of, you know, the Dove Law interview. Getting to know the man that runs everything on this channel, YouTube. One thing we did not touch, we just talked about it outside for a quick second. You actually own a business. Yeah. Another business. Yeah, my business is called The Business. It's called The Business. <laughs> With Z's. <laughs> and I just started a YouTube channel for The Business as well, or a, a few months back, The Business LLC. <laughs> and uh, so I start, one of the main reasons I started The Business is so I could sponsor myself and, you know, ha- justify buying all this equipment and nice. trying to generate income from making videos. The business T-shirts coming soon, copyright pending. <laughs> yeah, speaking of that, um, <laughs> I know you're somewhat of a graphic artist. Oh, yeah. So we're going to have to have some kind of ongoing partnership. We can do that. With the business and Damien Richard. Oh, yes. We Definitely. make a lot of graphics. A lot of graphics. <laughs> I, th- I think all my sites are, are down now. I think I got like one site up on print all over me that I haven't done nothing with in like five years and the i bi- still make like two three dollars here there every yeah. once in a while <laughs> the business would be happy to aid with making and hosting another website for you that'd be awesome that'd oh, be great yeah that'd be it'd definitely be something in our in our scope of practice 
in my scope of practice. <laughs> in our wide field of everything we do. Yeah. <laughs> Just more things on the resume. <laughs> Hey, but like the business, have yeah. a scuba diver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a pizza delivery driver. Yeah, pizza delivery driver. <laughs> and a the FedEx business. driver, too. I forgot about that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I guess we can go ahead and uh, wrap things up. Um, I mentioned the links that will be in the description in the beginning. Click that. Uh, you'll support uh, the channel, the business, me, and the veteran photographer Richard Gilligan that takes the pictures and uh, hopefully in the future the business will be able to pay whoever is a partner now are you going to uh, be adding some of your uh, we didn't speak about this we might have to do it later any of your drone shots to the channel uh, yeah typically I just put them up on there um, th there so there's a bunch on there now yeah, go check those out. There's some some great sites that he even got some great pictures on. Yeah, and in I, 4K. I definitely plan on uh, doing a bunch more of those. Is this 4K sure. right now? No, this is not 4K. Oh, thank God, because I am too <laughs> yeah. ugly for 4K. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. We got to take a step back. Got to take a step back. We're kind of big. Yeah. Kind of. I ain't got my hair cut or my face cut yet. You know, I'm just saying. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> The Dre the Barber, you know what I'm saying? Hey, a shirt coming, uh, patent pending. Speaking of uh, Dre, um, we're going to get Dre on here for the next episode if, if you're up for it. I'm up for it now. You see me get up out of my chair. We'll see. All right. We'll see. Yeah. Hey, look to the future of Duff Law and Dre the Barber, the man, the myth, the legend, coming soon to a podcast near you. That's right. And cut. speaking classes. He's one of my son. Yes! Oh, All right!